How much do you know about the five big ideas in Teaching for Mastery? Mathematical thinking is one of the five big ideas, but what does it mean for teachers? We chatted to Dr Debbie Morgan, NCETM's Director for Primary, to find out her top tips for teachers. Mathematical thinking, it lies at the heart of learning mathematics. It's not a discrete topic within the curriculum, but instead it's a vehicle through which we learn mathematics. We're looking for relationships and engaging reasoning about those relationships. It shouldn't be something that's just got to be memorised. To a young child, for example, taking a sweet from a jar and then putting it back in again, and you say, how many sweets have I got now? The same number. It's logical to them that taking an amount and putting the amount back conserves the total number of sweets in the jar. So it's that level of thinking and that level of of sense making. Included in it are various elements, such as the ability to conjecture, to be able to reason and think, what would happen if I added two to both sides of this equation? Would it still remain balanced? What might happen if I doubled the number of apples? Would I have an even number or an odd number? Can I convince somebody that actually I'm going to have an even number? Also involved is is explanation, being able to explain something. For example, why one quarter plus two quarters is not three eighths. I don't add. In fact, I love true and false activities where pupils identify which calculations are correct and which are not because they're looking for the relationships. So for example, here we're focusing on uh, commutativity. So in the first example, three plus two is equal to two plus three. And then in my second one, four plus one is equal to five plus one. Well, no, it can't possibly be. I don't even need to calculate that. It can't possibly be. I've got more on the right-hand side because the ones are the same but five is is one more than four. So it's that reasoning about those relationships and spotting those connections within the mathematics. I also want to mention generalizing at this stage. Whatever topic we are teaching in mathematics, we are always journeying towards a generalization. In mathematics, a generalization is a rule that always works. For example, we can swap the numbers over in a multiplication expression and the product remains the same. Of course, we all need to understand why that works. Understanding those rules is absolutely integral to building the mathematics. And that's part of the journey. But the generalization summarizes in a nugget. Something applies to all numbers or at least within parameters or a range. And those generalizations bring the mathematics together and make it easier to learn. How does it fit into the five big ideas? It's actually threaded through all the other five big ideas. It's central to coherence and variation, for example. As we journey through the mathematics, we need to make sense of it. So we need to be reasoning and thinking mathematically. It's integral to fluency as we reason about some facts that we already know, such as 10 fives are 50, to work out that nine fives must be five less. It's also central to representation and structure. As we think about structures, the structures are, ex- are exposed and we look for them in a representation. What is the role of talk in the process of mathematical thinking? Talk very much supports mathematical thinking. Talk is a means by which children verbalise their thinking and doing so, they clarify and extend ideas. A common strategy for this, used in lots of contexts, is to develop a staged approach. For example, think, pair, share, where it slows children down and gives them time for thought. So children are given thinking time first before talking, So it's not a race to be the first with their hand up. Then they might verbalise their thoughts, maybe not even to another person initially, but maybe to themselves by either talking to their hand or cupping their hand around their mouth. So they get a chance to 
rehearse what they're going to say. And then maybe the next stage is sharing it with their learning partner, just one other person, before there's the opportunity maybe to share with the rest of the class. Of course, what's really important is not just the talk, but children listening to that talk. In other words, listening to that mathematical thought and either being able to challenge or build upon STEM sentences where children verbalize, such as the whole is divided into four equal parts, each part is one quarter. And then being able to apply that to when the whole is divided into five equal parts, each part is one fifth. And this becomes something that they not only say together, the STEM sentence, but it becomes part of their own thoughts and their own communication. What's the benefit of considering mathematical thinking when designing maths lessons? It has enormous impact. If the teacher plans for all to think and ensures that all are thinking, then children will make better progress. It's as simple as that. And it's more likely also that learning will be retained over time. Memory is the residue of thought. We remember what we think about which is why it's so important that the teacher focuses that thinking because that's going to be where the learning is. The thing that's going to be remembered and help build foundations for later learning. What are some of the challenges teachers might face? I think there's there's sometimes a danger that only some children in the class do the thinking and the others think, no, I'm not very good at maths. I'll just listen to that person. They'll do the thinking for me. But it needs to be all children. STEM sentences can just, if we're not careful, just become a bit of repetition without much thought but we need to make sure that the thoughts there either through having concrete manipulatives or images so that their, their thinking is focused as they verbalize the mathematics so those two things need to go together and that's a challenge for teachers to ensure that children are not just parroting but actually they are really engaged in mathematical thought as they say those stem sentences I would say another key challenge is ensuring that all children understand what it means to learn mathematics. I can't emphasize this enough. When they when they come into a mathematics lesson, they are seeking to make sense of the mathematics. If they are seeking to do that, then immediately their thinking process is switched on. They're looking for those connections. They're seeking to be mathematically observant. They're seeking to spot those relationships. Um, teachers need to ensure that children are not thinking that maths is a, is a passive process why, but whereby they just listen to the teacher and seek to remember what um, he or she says. What are your top tips for teachers? Firstly, teaching mathematics is not a telling process. We need to engage children in mathematical thought. However, neither is it, is it an open process where we, we throw out an open question and children just think of all, about all, lots of different things within the class, some of which are relevant and some of which are not. The teacher's role is to focus children's attention on the particular element that is important at the time that is crucial to children's progress and will move the mathematics on. Keep at the forefront of your mind that mathematical reasoning is not an add-on. As I said at the beginning, it's the way in which we learn mathematics. They should be reasoning throughout each lesson. Reasoning isn't a particular task when you're planning or oh, where's my reasoning task. Reasoning should be, should be throughout the lesson, should be an integral part of the learning.
obviously is really important in the process of mathematical thought. Mathematical thought is not just a silent thing, but we verbalize it. And in verbalizing, it helps us to think more deeply. It helps us to embed what we're thinking. And indeed, it helps us to extend our thinking. Children do not automatically become mathematical talkers. They need to be taught. And there is lots of support from the Mass Hub hubs to develop effective uh, strategies such as the think pair um, share strategy remember memory is the residue of thought we remember what we think about thanks for your time debbie if you want to learn more about mathematical thinking read the full q a with debbie in our feature for more information about teaching for mastery and the five big ideas visit our website